Good morning, everyone. Glad to see you in Carl's house on this gorgeous, beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, this is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. And our sermon title and the ser uh, theme for the worship is, of course, we continue preaching on the spiritual gifts as we believe it can be a spiritual renewal series for our personal lives and for the life of the church. And this morning we are going to be thinking about the spiritual gift called wisdom. Wisdom. And I see some of you are correcting your position when you're ready to hear something about spiritual wisdom that God has provided for us. Thank you so much to be here with, with us this morning, being here with us this morning. Uh, friends who are worshiping at home or traveling through Facebook, glad to have you with us this morning. We love to have you. And then later when this program goes to a YouTube, I know we are gaining more people who worship with us. So glad to have you. God bless everyone there. Of course, this morning service will be also a baptismal service as we will baptize two youngsters, bring them into covenant relationship through water with their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is a wonderful place to be this morning. We feel God's presence, and we, we feel that it was good, 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 good that you came to church this morning. Okay, if you have your bulletins handy, please take a look. Take a, take a look a little bit, brief, brief look at your bulletins. Um, there's lots of information about our coming programs and events. Um, uh, one thing I would like to mention to you is our coming Wednesday night program. It is called Un Unafraid. Uh, it is a uh, program uh, by uh, Reverend um, Adam Hamilton. Adam is a pastor at the United Methodist Church in Kansas, close to Kansas City in Kansas. And he's an um, editor and writer for several Bible studies and programs that uh, are well known all over the world. And uh, you better believe that this is going to be a very good one. We believe this is very, um, very encouraging, um, a lifting up program for us to follow this fall. I'm going to put sign-ups um, out to you that you can sign up. Unfortunately, in the first service, they forgot to pass it from this side on this side. And so we didn't get too many signing up uh, in the first service, but hopefully we do better job in, in this one. Uh, there is also a book that you can take a look. We will uh, need a book. And when you put your name uh, on this list, please indicate how many books uh, you or your spouse or your family need uh, for this study. We would love to have it. And many, many other ministry opportunities there uh, and programs coming to your way. I know that our Bible reading challenge will continue. That is enhancing our spiritual life. There are two things that we can't forget. It's reading your Bible and praying. Reading your Bible and praying. That's the basics. That's the foundation of our spiritual life. And I know you are doing well by following this. Okay. Um, uh, I will pass this along to you uh, to sign in or sign up either way. And let's pray together as we worship. Dear Heavenly Father, we have come together this morning to worship you, to hear your voice, to surrender everything to you under your grace and mercy. Lord, this congregation, and as a congregation, as the body of Christ, we ask again, we beg, we pray again, can Holy Spirit come upon this gathering so that we can see and we can hear from our Lord and Savior Jesus. We pray for our friends who are worshiping with us at home and everyone here in the sanctuary. Again, Lord, inspire us, lift us up, help us to see your glory and help us to hear your voice. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. When I think about the theme of wisdom, the first hymn that came to my mind is this hymn, Be Thou My Vision. The second verse says, Be Thou My Wisdom, 
and thou my true word. So I invite you to please stand as we sing together as you're able. Stand to sing, Be Thou My Vision. psalm reading today is psalm 84 and psalm the psalmist says better is a single day in your courtyards than a thousand days elsewhere it's good to be in the house of the lord let us sing together better is one day two three four
Please join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please greet one another in the sweet name of Jesus. Please be seated. Thank you so much. Glad to have everyone and glad to greet one another and glad to be greeted and recognized in the church. This morning uh, we have a sacrament of baptism before us. We have two sacraments in the Methodist Church. One is water baptism and the other one is Holy Communion or Lord's Supper or Holy Eucharist. Uh, different names but the same thing. Now this morning we have two youngsters here who wants to be baptized. Uh, Atticus Scott Friends is right here, Atticus. And then we have uh, Caleb Jeremiah Nichols, of course, in the others. <laughs> I should have known that, yeah. Glad to have you, sir. All right. And the parents are, yeah, come on by. I'm sorry I should have probably said that. There's the Nichols family, and then there is a um, French family here. Okay, let me remove this. And the church family, I'm going to ask you all to follow the program as there are some questions to you. Uh, and I'm sure you will respond accordingly. When you see somebody baptized, it is for you to remember your baptism and the baptismal vows that was made by your parents or you made them yourself independently. So, <clears throat> will you nurture, this is the question to you, church family, will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life, include Atticus and Caleb now before you in your care and surround them with a community of love and forgiveness Eternal Father, your mighty acts of salvation have been made known through water from the moving of your spirit upon the waters of creation to the deliverance of your people through the flood and through the Red Sea. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb, baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection, and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water, and Atticus and, Atticus and Caleb, who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in the final victory through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. All right. Which go first? I think, is it Atticus go first? Did you guys decide it that at home? Okay. That's, all, that's okay with me. I'm okay, I'm, okay with, I'm okay with that. All right.
Atticus, since you are a little bit bigger than infant, I'm going to ask you a very personal question before baptizing you. Do you believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Yes. Jesus Christ is in your heart. Then Pastor Timor is going to baptize you as a Christian believer. I baptize you as a Christian believer. Now, baptism is a big thing. Now, it is an outward sign of an inward grace that is in your heart. Now, when you receive baptism, it means that you put Christ on you. You put Jesus on you. The one who is inside your heart is now going to be also on you. So you are surrounded by his presence, not just surrounded by he lives in you. This means that you become faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. From this day on, after you have received baptism, you can tell everybody, I believe in Jesus Christ and I have been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Okay, and you and your family will remember this the rest of your life, which is important. But more important than this is that God remembers you the rest of your life. Okay, so Atticus Scott, friends, come a little bit close. As a Christian believer, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And anoint you, I anoint you. In the name of the Father. And the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. May this anointing be upon you and in you. Rest of your life. As a Christian believer, grow up to be faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So then there is uh, Caleb Jeremiah Nichols. Am I right? Yep. Good. Make sure. Come a little closer. I baptize you, Caleb Jeremiah Nichols. I baptize you. By the way, before I baptize, I want to ask you something. I almost fail. Do you believe Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Do you want to be baptized in the water? Let's do it. As a Christian believer, Caleb, I baptize you in the name of the Father. and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Caleb Jeremiah, I, I anoint you with oil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May this anointing remain on you, upon you, and in you the rest of your life, to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Church, what do you say? What do you say, church? Okay. Now, these 
this baptismal cloth, as I use as a towel, is for you to keep. They have been made for you and you only. So every time when you, wherever you go, when you grow up, you move out, go to school or go to work, wherever you do, stay, keep this with you. This is a reminder to you that you were being baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, okay? This is actually for Atticus, it says A. So, and this is for you, Caleb, because it starts with C, okay? That's for you. All right. And then I have baptismal certificate for you. So there is uh, Atticus. Thank you. Goes to mommy. And there's for Caleb. Goes to mommy. One more time. God bless you. <laughs> there's a little bit actually more reading to follow. You know, we are in the Methodist Church, there's no end to readings. <laughs> Members of the household of God, I command Atticus and Caleb to your care, to your love and care, to all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may, be, you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Oh! 
Let us sing Jesus Loves Me to welcome our children forward for children's time and children's message. Jesus loves me, this I know. Good morning, friends. Friends, do you want to curl in this way a little bit closer since this is right here in front of me? Curl in this way. Fiona, come on around. Come on this way a little bit. There we go. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So today, the grown-ups are talking about the gift of wisdom, and that's a little bit tricky. So I thought first we should talk about what being smart is compared to being wise. So can anybody raise their hand and think of the smartest person they know? Who's the smartest person you know, Micah? God, okay. Caleb, who's the smartest person you know? God. Anybody have a different answer? Eli? Uh, Give me a famous scientist or a researcher or somebody who's really smart. That's who I thought of. Albert Einstein. Fiona? Yeah, thinking about God too. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. Well, there are a lot of famous smart people, right? And a lot of times we say, oh, we want to go to school to be smart, or, oh, I'm really smart at knowing a lot about science, or oh, I'm really smart and know a lot about football. Well, let me tell you all this. My family, believe it or not, actually does a lot of 5K races. And we're not super fast, but we like to do these races. So we're getting ready to do another race here soon in November. And I've been thinking about things that I should do to get ready for the race. So what would be some smart things if I want to be faster at the race than I have been in the past? Eli? Um, so I, you know, you gotta be smart at the yeah, so I could do some practice running, right? That would be a smart idea. What do you got? I could pace myself. I should get some running strategies. That would be a smart idea. Fiona? Doing some stretching. That's a smart idea. What about eating? right? I should probably eat some healthy foods, right? So let me tell you some really smart stuff about fruits and vegetables, right? Because I should know things about eating healthy if I'm going to do it, right? So did you know bananas are berries, but strawberries actually aren't? That throw you a little bit? What about this one? A pumpkin is really a fruit. Yep, yeah. What about this one? potatoes were the first vegetable to be grown in space. Did you know that? Learning all sorts of things today, right? So I might be really smart about getting ready for the race, right? I might know all these things in my head, right? But here's the difference. Wisdom is when we actually take those smart things and we do them. So when I was a kid, there were these commercials on the TV, and they would say, verb, it's what you do. And there would be like a kid who would be running, and so then the word verb would go up on the screen, and it would say, it's what you do. Or he would be swimming, and it would say, verb, it's what you do, right? Well, that's kind of the same thing where we switch from being smart to being wise or having wisdom. So if we're smart, right, in the church, we might be like, oh, we're smart. We know what the Bible says, right? We know what God wants us to do. That's being smart. But when we switch that over to wisdom, that's when we're taking what we know, we're taking that smartness, and we're actually doing it or we're using it. So wisdom in the church isn't just knowing the Bible or knowing a lot about what God wants us to do. Wisdom is us actually doing the stepping. It's us actually moving forward and doing what God calls us to do, right? So I can be smart and know all the things I should do for the race, but if I keep going home and eating these double chocolate chip Godira chocolate cookies Mr. Nick got me, I'm not going to be faster at the race, right? Mr. Nick is not setting me up for success, right? But if I use wisdom, right, and I take these things I know, and I maybe don't eat this cookie and actually eat those fruit and vegetables, and I do the stretching, 
then I'm using wisdom, right? I'm being wise and moving closer to the goal, okay? So what I want us to remember today is that wisdom in the church is taking what we learn in Sunday school, taking what we learn in children's church, taking what we read in our Bible, and actually using it or doing it and applying it to our lives, okay? All right, let's say a prayer. Dear God, I just pray that today these kiddos would take what they have, they have learned while being at this church and from their families and from their communities about what you would like, God, and they wouldn't just know it, that they would actually apply it, that they wouldn't just have the words in their hearts, but that they would actually do the doing and speak them. And they wouldn't just have the desire in their hearts to go and do what you would want them to do, God, but you would actually help them to have wisdom and do the stepping and do the moving and, have, and do the helping, God. So I would just pray that you will help us, not only these children, but us as a church as a whole, to move from being a smart church, from being a church that has all sorts of theological knowledge or that has all sorts of scriptures stored in our hearts, but to instead be a church that is wise, that has wisdom and is moving forward to do the stepping and do what you have called us to do. Amen. Now, before we rush out, there are a couple things that are going to be different today. So today is Promotion Sunday. And what that means is our kiddos who have just started third grade are going to be given a Bible. So if you just started third grade, could you please stand up and stay here? And if you are not just starting third grade, could you please go back to your seat just for a second? So there is... You introduced these guys. Okay. So we have three kiddos that are actually um, moving into third grade this year. So we have Atticus, we have Allie, and we have Fiona. And so what we would like to do is we would like to present them with an adventure Bible. Um, and then we would also like to pray over these kiddos. So we'll um, let Pastor Kimo take over. Okay. Miss Allie Cole. You Cole. Don't run anywhere, don't go anywhere yet. Uh, then there is Atticus. I know you, Atticus. Let's see, who is here, the last one? Is it Fiona? All oh, right, okay, we got it. So this is the Bible. Keep it close to your heart. That's where the wisdom comes. Not just the knowledge, information, but the wisdom which is to apply in the knowledge, to put it in practice and walk with, with the Lord all your life in any given circumstances. So keep the Bible close to your heart and read it, pray about it, and follow it. So let's pray together. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing these children who are learning and growing to be faithful disciples. May this Bible inspire them, bless them, Lead them and guide them. May they learn who you are to bless them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we are actually going to dismiss to Children's Church now. We are also going to have our first um, session of bridge. So any kiddo fifth grade and under is actually welcome to come back with us today. Our bridge kids will rejoin us in the, in the sanctuary later in the sermon, um, but you will pick up your younger kiddos in the children's church room as usual. Thank you. join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. Our first reading is Psalm 84 and it's found in your pew Bible on page 731. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord of heavenly forces. 
my very being, longs, even yearns, for the Lord's courtyards. My heart and my body will rejoice out loud to the living God. Yes, the sparrow, too, has found a home there. The swallow has found herself a nest where she can lay her young beside your altars. Lord of heavenly forces, my King, my God, those who live in your house are truly happy. They praise you constantly. Those who put their strength in you are truly happy. Pilgrimage is in their hearts as they pass through the Baca Valley. They will make it a spring of water. Yes, the early rain covers it with blessings. They go from strength to strength until they see the supreme God in Zion. Lord God of heavenly forces, hear my prayer. Listen closely, Jacob's God. Look at our shield, God. Pay close attention to the face of your anointed one. Better is a single day in your courtyards than a thousand days anywhere else. I would prefer to stand outside the entrance of my God's house than live comfortably in the tents of the wicked. The Lord is a sun and shield. God is favor and glory. The Lord gives, doesn't withhold, good things to those who walk with integrity. Lord of heavenly forces, those who trust in you are truly happy. Second reading is Proverbs 4, verses 1 through 7. And it's found on page 784. Hear, children, fatherly instruction. Pay attention to gain understanding. I'll teach you well. Don't abandon my instruction. When I was a son to my father, tender and my mother's favorite, he taught me and said to me, let your heart hold on to my words. Keep my commands and live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Don't forget and don't turn away from my words. Don't abandon her and she will guard you. Love her and she will protect you. The beginning of wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding before anything else. Next is 1 Corinthians 12, verse 8, and it is on page 1398. A word of wisdom is given by the Spirit to one person, a word of knowledge to another, according to the same Spirit. And please rise for the reading of the Gospel. And it's Matthew 15, verses 10 and 11. And it is on page 1190. Jesus called to the crowd near and said to them, listen and understand. It's not what goes into the mouth that contaminates a person in God's sight. It's what comes out of the mouth that contaminates the person. The word of God for the people of God. I invite you to sing and join in our theme song that we've been singing during this entire sermon series of the gifts of the Spirit.
I greet everyone in the sweet name of Jesus. So many good things going on in the life of the church, and, and we are hoping and praying once we get in the middle of fall and closer to it, well, we are close to fall now, as all the program starts and we go back more normality, we see even more wonderful things taking place in the life of this church. Although Berea United, United Methodist Church never closes the doors during summertime, like many churches go very slow during summertime, uh, I can assure you that we just don't do that. We keep on ministering with uh, summer or winter. And I'm glad that you are supporting our ministries because that's what it takes to uh, run the ministries. Thank you so much for your attendance, witness, and support for our ministries. So the spiritual gift that we are about to take a brief look is called wisdom. Wisdom. Um, so important thing and so many times forgotten thing. Remember Jesus in the gospel when he wanted to teach the crowd, he says, uh, the Bible says he called to the crowd to come to, to him and to hear. And then he says, listen, which is pay attention, please. Pay attention, listen, he said. And try to understand. Can you read between the lines? Jesus saying, I know this is not going to be easy, but try to understand. It is not what goes into your mouth that defies you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. And this is so profound what he says, considering in the context of Judaism, where rules and regulations and customs, including ceremonies and ceremonials, uh, things related to, to faith and religion, was so big thing, food offerings. Now Jesus says that all does not matter. What do you eat? What matters, what comes out of your mouth, that defiles you. Defiling means making you unclean. So it matters what we say. And related to our topic this morning, wisdom is something that matters. Wisdom. Wisdom of God, spiritual gift called wisdom. By the way, the statement Jesus made in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 15 and verse 10 was so different, so radical, so revolutionary that disciples came to him and they asked, do you, relate, do you realize you offended you offended the Pharisees. This was, this was against our faith, what you just said. You are saying these ceremonial eating habits and food really doesn't matter. It goes in and then goes out. What matters is the words you say and spell. That is what defines you. That is what tells you who you are. Having something to do really with our topic this morning, which is spiritual wisdom. Now, remember King Solomon, who was, as I believe, the third king of Israel, was led in the place where he can ask God anything, anything, and God would grant his request. So Solomon, being a new king, asked wisdom, wisdom of heart, and it, the request was so pleasing to God that God said, I will grant you wisdom, but along with wisdom, I will bless your kingdom 
tremendously. You will get everything else that you didn't ask because you ask wisdom. How many times we have remembered to ask wisdom in the life of our Christian faith. So my question this morning is, why is it that someone who is obviously much less intelligent, using the word, is able to do more than someone who is more intelligent? Ever been thinking about that? Somebody who is smarter, less smarter than somebody else, can do much more in this life than somebody you believe would have much more capacity to do. It has something to do with our topic, with our message. The answer is the wisdom given by God is the answer. That's the endless source of good deeds and good work as Christian believers. Let me just say this, oh boy, friends and brothers and sisters, how much we need wisdom today. To be a Christian believer, to be a community of faith, and to be, to be people among people in this life. Always needed, today maybe more than ever before. Wisdom, spiritual gift called wisdom. So let's think about the meaning of wisdom. Let's think about the meaning of wisdom. It is to be, as I believe, it is to be understood in relation to knowledge. To knowledge. As we all know, knowledge is information. And today we get plenty of that. Even young generation, they get lots of, they, get, they, get, they will be exposed by information through different means of communication, including internet and computers and all that. So, Knowledge is information, and wisdom is the right use of that information, right use of it. Knowledge has no use unless it is applied. It don't matter how much information you have, how much knowledge you have, whether biblical or uh, just a regular common knowledge, if you never apply it, there's no use for it. Wisdom is to be understood in relation to some basic concept. And I'm going to mention just few because they are, this is a big field. I'm going to mention to you just a few concepts where um, wisdom can be understood. Now, spiritual wisdom never creates confusion. Would, can you picture Jesus coming to you when you are in the place that you need advice or you are in low place or whatever place you are, you pray to him. Can you picture him coming to you and making you very confused? No, he wouldn't do that. So spiritual wisdom never creates confusion. That's important for us to remember. It never creates envy or strife but always creates harmony and peace, like Jesus. That is what spiritual wisdom does. Wisdom as a gift of the Holy Spirit is to create unity in the church. Unity in the church. Spiritual wisdom is always used in a cheerful way. Cheerful way, joyful way. Remember, also Paul says in Galatians 5, 22, that joy is the fruit of the Spirit. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Now, gloomy attitude is not in keeping with the gift of wisdom, I don't think. Wisdom denotes quality and not just activity, quality. Have you ever had that weird feeling when you keep on following Christ, you come to church and you participate that I, I am missing something. I am missing something. I'm looking for something deeper. And then you hear the word quality, you say, that's right. That's what I'm missing. I am missing quality, maybe more than anything else. 
Wisdom of God brings quality into your Christian faith. Anyone can be active, whether he or she is indwelled by the Holy Spirit or not. There are many things that can keep us very active. We all know, we all busy. We don't have to ask anybody if you are busy or not. They say, I'm busy. I've been talking recently to many retirees, and they say, Timo, I'm more busy today than I was when I was working. Is that true? Or you talk to young families with, with young, young families with children. They said, oh, I'm so busy. I, I, I don't have time for that. Who is stealing the time from us? Who is keeping us overwhelmingly active? Now, there is nothing wrong to be active, active, but if, if that's all you have, that is not enough, friends. Only a gift of the Spirit is a source of wisdom that results quality. Quality. You can be busy in the church, and we can make you even busier than you want to be. But it doesn't bring, if it doesn't bring quality into, back into your life, what's the point? Church is a place where we grow in our faith, where we serve. That brings quality to our life. We don't advertise heavy, then come and get overwhelming busy and depressed with us. Join us. People say, no, thank you. But we come, please, find along with us more quality into your life. More quality, more wisdom. Spiritual wisdom transforms us, shapes our character. It changes us, put in other words. Spiritual wisdom changes us. It epitomizes, should I say, a pious spiritual manners and finds expression in the knowledge of the Word of God. Who can be wiser than God himself? Yesterday morning, as I was making, again, preparations, finalizing um, preparations for this preaching this morning, I read Proverbs, written by King Solomon, Proverbs. And all of a sudden, not that I haven't read it before, many times, many times before, but yesterday morning I, I experienced that, that all these words, all that was there before me, provided me wisdom. It was feeding and nourishing my soul with great wisdom of God. What a pleasant experience, tender experience. God, you are so wise. It wasn't just Solomon, King Solomon, writing to me, but it was God using King Solomon as his instrument to bring wisdom into my heart, into this life, into his church. Spiritual wisdom consists of the thoughts of God understood and embodied in Jesus Christ. Now, these characteristics of Jesus in you and in me for the enlightenment, are the, for, in, for the enlightenment of your life and my life and uh, everyone who serves alongside with, uh, with us. Before I go further with this sermon, I would like to encourage us this morning. Please consider this. Pray more often and ask wisdom the wisdom of God to fulfill your heart, your decisions, your life, your family, your personality, your character, and it will make your life more beautiful and more quality life than ever before. Ask in prayer for more wisdom for, for your fellow Christians and for your leaders who lead you and who you listen to whether they are congregational leaders or community leaders. We keep on hearing lots of unwise things. It's sad thing, almost pitiful thing, because there is so much wisdom in the Lord. Wisdom as a gift of the Holy Spirit is different than human wisdom from that of the flesh, should I say. Yeah, you were born with 
wisdom and capability to use your reasoning and ability to think, and that's the gift of God. But the spiritual wisdom is more than that. Many people have wisdom apart from the gift of the Holy Spirit, but true spiritual wisdom is from the Lord. I personally rather listen to somebody with spiritual wisdom for some 10 minutes than listen to somebody all day long without spiritual wisdom whatsoever. Because I believe that spiritual wisdom is that will build me up, will feed my soul. And there are several scriptures and passages of scripture in your Bible confirming this fact. Just for you to consider, please read 1 Corinthians 1.20. 1 Corinthians 1, 19 through 20 and on. 2 Corinthians 1, 12, and then, of course, James 3, 15. Many, many others. The whole book, 66 books of the Bible is about wisdom. Then secondly, let's consider how the gift of wisdom relates to life. What is it to me? Wisdom is given to believers for defense. For example, for defense. Why I say this? For defense. Those who follow Christ today can be subject to hostility. Please understand that. We may be confronted that we need help making a defense for ourselves, making defense for ourselves. Then there is use for wisdom, for sure. Wisdom that comes from above. Spiritual wisdom is given to believers for how to answer to people who don't believe. They are not any worse or they are not our many enemies. By any means, we are to love everybody. But there are just some people who just don't believe at all. So we need wisdom. Great people, uh, friends, we have done sometimes very dummy things as a Christian believers to, to impact people who don't believe. It is so easy to get into that format of being Christian, a little better than everybody else, and that's where you go 100 miles per hour wrong way. 100 miles per hour wrong way. Apostle Peter, in the first letter in Peter's, in his letter, chapter 3.15, says that we are to be given wisdom in circumstances, moments, and situations like that from above. One of the greatest challenges Christians face is witnessing to those who really don't believe. They challenge your life. They may be challenging to you. It is impossible to do this in many situations without the gift of the Holy Spirit and wisdom that he brings. I've been there many times, as most of us, I'm sure. If you are active in your community, you will be constantly in situations where spiritual wisdom is needed. Friends, we are living in the middle of a mission field. We are living in the middle of a mission field. If it was me, I wouldn't send one missionary outside of the United States because there's a mission field here. We are in the middle of a mission field, and all the Western Europe included. Why I'm saying this, you have heard me saying this before, because the number of Christians... Combining all the denominations and non-denominational communities, number of Christians are declining in the United States big time, going down big time. Every mainline den denominations are going down, number-wise. Number of Christians are going down in the United States and in Western Europe. And we are coming more and more a mission field. We meet the standards of being called a missional country, mission country, that we need missionaries, we need Christian believers. Instead of being in mission, in the mission, we Christians, we have started fighting against each other. We fight against each other. And only person we make happy is devil. He enjoys 
to hear that we are off the goal. We are putting our energy and time in fighting each other. That is what devil is dreaming about. Sleeping and fighting Christian communities with no wisdom are harmless communities, useless for the outside communities. This is why the wisdom of God, inspired by the Holy Spirit, comes in the picture. We need to pray for that. I have seen one time, I've been witnessing one time, just an example, one time I was still uh, serving in one of the churches in Finland. It was the only appointment I had was outside of Helsinki. Beautiful lake, in the, we call it lake area of Finland. A beautiful community. And then I went over to visit one younger family. They had sheep. They were farming sheep. Bunch of lambs. On that morning, I just felt to be led to go and visit them. Uh, the farmer, the younger farmer came to me and he said, good timing, Pastor. We are, I'm dealing with sad thing here. I said, what's going on? He said, there was a wolf attack last night. Flock of wolves attack our herd. They jump into a, in a fenced area of, of my sheep, and they all gone. Is I have learned to know since I was little to watch how they attack these wolves. They come one or two nights before they were supposed to attack. They observe everything, where the sheep are, how they are doing, and where are the leader sheep. Where are the little ones? Where are the some ones who are limping a little bit? They record every. They are smart. And then day or two afterwards, they come back. And then they follow their plan. They attack the sheep herd. If they were to do that just to kill one or two to feed themselves, that would be, I guess, okay. But they don't do that. They jump in. They make sure that they separate all the leaders because these little ones would follow the leader. They would separate. They would confuse the leaders. Then they create confusion in the flock, in the herd. But they go after these little ones and the weak ones. That's the first thing. As a re result of their attack, not just eating one or two to feed themselves, but they kill everyone. So there was actually 30 or 40 killed sheep in the field. That was a terrible thing to witness. And that is how devil attacks Christ church. Wisdom is given to believers for problem solving. James says in 1.5 in the book of James, if you need wisdom, ask our general, general Father of God, God fa Father, and he will give you wisdom, and he will rebuke you for asking. To use of this gift dissolves tensions and groups, in groups, different groups, into churches. Many times it clarifies different certain objectives to make processes shorter by using wisdom that come from above. There are many applications, lots of use for spiritual wisdom in the life of the church and in your life, in my life, and through our lives into this world. Wisdom will be given to Christians for different practical conduct. If you need, uh, if you read Apostle Paul's letter to Ephesians, by the way, one of my favorite letters to read. If I want some joyful reading, don't call it easy reading, but joyful reading, I read Apostle Paul's letter to Ephesians. Every time you feel you, 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 you learn something. Now, as a reader of the Bible, as you are, and you are getting better and better, uh, you realize that the, how... Uh, Excellent reference this is to this fact. For this fact, I'm just trying to say something. The first three chapters of the book of Ephesians are dedicated to doctrine, and the last three to the application of it. 
to the application of it. So there is knowledge, there is information, and there is wisdom. How to apply this information into practice? This is far from being just my, my, and me, me appoint, uh, the, uh, opinion, or you and your opinion, but this is centering to the will of Christ. And that is what spiritual wisdom is all about, the will of Christ with harmony and peace and rest. One thing and last thing, the wisdom, the gift of wisdom is mediated through the Holy Spirit. It is mediated through the Holy Spirit. He not only enables us, the Holy Spirit not only enables us uh, uh, to stand for one ourselves, for ourselves, but also to convey understanding to others as it relates to salvation and other spiritual matters in the, in the Scripture. This is spiritual wisdom. It is the Holy Spirit who gives believers the ability to effectively apply this wisdom to our own lives and to our fellow Christian believers. Now, there are many scriptures relating to this, uh, but let me just read Romans 16, 9. It's a short uh, verse saying, but everyone knows that you are obedient to the Lord. This makes me very happy. I want you to be wise in doing right and so stay innocent of any wrongs. Being wise to do right and staying innocent for any wrongdoings. This is what wisdom does for us in the life of Christian belief, in the life of churches. We run out of wisdom so easily. And if you believe if you have it, you better watch it. You don't have really that much. But when we are close to Lord Jesus Christ, when we are drawing wisdom from His Word, and when we open our hearts for the blessing and presence of the Holy Spirit, we are witnessing the endless resource and source of wisdom pouring into our hearts and lives. And that is called the gift of wisdom by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we pray this spiritual gift called wisdom to fill our hearts and lives, the life of our church and any church in this community. How often, Lord, we make unway, unwise and poor choices and we fail to ask your wisdom we fail to pause and open our hearts way open for you to come in with your wisdom and peace. Come, Holy Spirit, come and reach for our hearts, reach to our heart with this blessing of wisdom that has inspired your churches and your followers, your leaders, your servants, through the centuries and history. Lord, we need your wisdom to lead us, to guide us, and to make difference through our service, through our church, and to everyone we, we meet. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord, we pray. Amen. We continue our worship time by the ministry of Kevin, or if the ushers come forward at this time. pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we are so thankful that you have called us to serve you with our talents and gifts and witness and prayers and attendance, and also through this, 
ministry of giving, we ask your blessing upon everyone and every gift in Christ's name. Amen. Please stand if you can. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise here the creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Be seated. Thank you so much. Before we leave this place and we go home, back to our mission field, we pray together. How many of you have a prayer concern for us to pray for? We just about everyone. God is close to you. Christ is close to you. He knows your heart. He knows your struggle. He knows everything about you. There's nothing that he doesn't know. And he welcomes you to come to him. That is what worship is all about. We have been welcomed to come to him who loves us, who cares for us. It don't matter where you are this morning, what you go through, God is close to you and he's ready to help you and bless you whether you are praying for your personal matters or matters of your church or children or friends or co-workers, whatever you pray for, God is close to you. When you turn your pulitons over on the back of your pulitons, there is a prayer chain list. Please take a moment to read it. Lots of friends waiting, waiting for the Lord. Lots of people sick. They are waiting for healing. They are waiting for the Lord. Let's continue praying for Elizabeth and Amy and Mike, Franklin, Amanda, and Noah Clear, Ron, John and Jerry, Piper and Eddie. Then we have a prayer list here considering including many, many friends who've been on the prayer list. And I go out visiting and I said, you still want us to pray? Yes, please. Pray for me. So I want to let you know, friends, we pray for you. Whether you are a member of this church or a member of the community, we pray. We call to the Lord for you as we do this morning. Let's go together to the Lord. Dear Jesus, you never turn us away. You're always welcoming us. You know us so well. You treat us well with wisdom, care, and love and peace. You never create confusion, but you bring you stabilize our lives. You bring us, you put us in a better place. Lord, we pray for each and everyone on our prayer list. We lay our hands on them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are not limited as we are in one place. 
you are everywhere where people are waiting for the blessing of our Savior and Lord Jesus. You are the healer. You lift us up. You encourage us. You give us wisdom and guidance beyond measure. Oh, Lord Jesus, you hear all the unspoken matters that we haven't spelled out. You know them all. Lord, we bring them all to you. We pray for one another here in the sanctuary. We pray for those who are worshiping at home through Facebook. May they feel your presence as truly as you are true with us this morning during this time of prayer. May they feel that Lord Jesus is with me with powerful blessing, guidance, and wisdom. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are moving among us. We thank you for the families who brought their children for baptism. We thank you, Lord, for these youngsters who wanted to be baptized, who wanted to make that commitment to be true followers of Jesus, whatever it takes. Lord, with this commitment, we surrender everything to you. Lead us and guide, guide us, Lord, as a church, as a community of faith. Help us to see your ministry, your power, your glory among us more than ever before. And as we leave this place of worship, go with us. Speak to us. Encourage us. Help us to see your miracles and your work among us. As we pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to please stand as we sing our closing hymn today, a hymn that speaks of following God every step of the day. Guys like the Agalite service this morning. They do. Fantastic job. Fantastic job. Okay, as we leave this place of worship and we go back to our mission field to love and to minister, to pray and to serve, please open your hearts for the blessing and benediction. My dear friends and each and every one of you, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. We pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.